Welcome to GMAT Club. Today we will look at how to increase speed and accuracy on the GMAT by using mental math. So grab your notepad and let's jump in. Why mental math matters on the GMAT? Well, on the GMAT, you can't use the calculator on the quant section of the test, which is the section that you really needed it. You'll have to perform all calculations on an awkward whiteboard or with a dry marker at the test center or even in your head. These take valuable time and can go wrong if your mental math skills are lacking. There's a very famous saying, the better you are at math, the less math that you do. On the GMAT, understanding concepts often matters more than performing lengthy calculations. So let's start with tip number one, the game of estimation. In high school, you were probably taught that math had to be exact. Well, now you're preparing for the GMAT and the rules are different. When should I estimate on GMAT math? Well, the short answer is whenever you would have to. The GMAT may give you hints by using the words like the estimated value of or approximately. Another clue is the spread or variation of the answer choices. If the answer choices are all very close to each other, well, then it's going to take some precision to distinguish. But if the answer choices are widely spaced, estimating will get your job done in most cases. Let's practice with an example. Selby wants to make a round trip flight to visit her parents. She has a choice of 37 different flights to her destination and 42 different return flights. Assuming there are no restrictions on which flights can be taken, approximately how many different combinations of flights are available to Selby for her trip? Now you have five options, 500, 900, 1200, 1600, and 2000. Because the question asks for an approximate number, estimation is a good option. There are significant gaps between the answer choices and they all end with zero. This means rounding both 37 and 42 to 40 is allowable and points you to the answer with little effort. There are approximately 1600 combinations available to Selby. Multiplying the actual values would be clearly unnecessary here. Tip number two, develop number sense. Number sense is your intuitive understanding of how numbers behave. It's about recognizing patterns and relationships between numbers. Let me make it clear by giving some examples. Fractions. Making the numerator of a fraction bigger makes the whole fraction bigger. Making the denominator of a fraction bigger makes the whole fraction smaller. That makes sense, right? This relationship is reversed when we deal with negative fractions. For example, minus half is greater than minus three fourths, which is greater than minus 10 ninth. Whenever you see negative fractions, you should always pause and double check. Decimal. Multiplying by a positive decimal less than one makes something smaller. Dividing by a positive decimal less than one makes something bigger. Similarly, the relationship is reversed when we deal with negative decimals less than one. Quiz yourself using random examples about these relationships until they become your second nature. This will help you quickly simplify calculations in your head. Tip number three, plug numbers where you see variables. When the GMAT gives a problem with variables, one reliable and effective approach is to assign numbers to these variables. You see, there are many different kinds of questions and picking numbers could be a good strategy. The best numbers to pick in any case depend much more on the specifics of the question. Some numbers that work for one question might not work for another question. Here are some example questions that you can try and tell the answer in the comment section. If n is an odd number, which of the following must be even? a, n minus 2 upon 2, b, n plus 1 upon 2, c, n square plus 2n, v, 2n plus 2, or e, 3n square minus 2n. Pro tip, avoid picking 1 or 0 as values for variables. Tip number 4, percentage calculations. Let's talk about questions where you have to find x percent of some number. It's easy when they're asking for 50% or maybe 25%, but it gets a little tricky when they start asking for 15% or 60% or any number like that. Here, number one, to calculate 15%, find 10% and add half of that. Example, 15% of 80 is equal to 8 plus 4, which is equal to 12. Number two, to calculate 60%, take half and add 10%. Example, 60% of 50 is equal to 25 plus 5, which is equal to 30. Number three, 18% of 50 is the same as 50% of 18. For questions where you want to find out what's the percent, use this formula. Formula. Percent change is equal to new minus original divided by original into 100. For small changes, you often can estimate this mentally. Four, questions like these where to find the value of a number that was increased by 20% to find the original value, divide by 1.2 or multiply by 5 upon 6. Practice these percentage tricks with various numbers to build your speed and confidence. Tip number five, arithmetic. Mem
Memorize perfect squares and square roots up to 20. I cannot emphasize on how important this is. For the difference of squares of nearby numbers, you can use the difference of squares formula. a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b into a minus b. Example, 19 squared is equal to 20 squared minus 20 plus 19 into 20 minus 19, which is equal to 400 minus 361, which is equal to 39. Learn how percentage works. People usually know how to calculate 50% or 25%, but we'll learn to find the values of 20%, 16.6%, or 83.3%. This stuff will come in handy in the exam. Tip number six, and the most important, practice, practice, practice. Improving your mental math skills is all about consistent practice and showing up daily. These tips will help you, but only when you do it consistently. Just like you create a gym plan, maybe plan on practicing some mental math stuff on Tuesday days or weekends. Now that we know the tips, here are some common pitfalls to avoid. Be careful with negative numbers because these can mess up the whole question if you're not careful. Don't forget about units and word problems and make sure you cross check and use the right unit. Watch out for questions that seem to require exact calculations but actually allow for estimation. Remember, the goal is to develop skills to tackle GMAT quantitative questions efficiently and accurately. With practice, these tips will Will become second nature. Take these strategies, practice them consistently, and watch your quantitative performance grow. And that's it for this one. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing GMAT tips. Good luck and see you guys in the next video.